Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of our course vlogs. This time we are out here at the beautiful Silver Rock Resort out here in La Quinta, California. Another 18 holes are coming your way. Hey, please don't forget to smash that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Here we go. What a beautiful property it is here up against the mountains in La Quinta, California. There's even space next door for another 18-hole golf course and a resort to be built. This place could be huge one day. The first hole here is pinched by that fairway bunker on the right. 250 yards is the most you can hit from the Black Tees. The Black Tees, what am I talking about? This is Silver Rock. The Silver Tees are the tips today. 250 yards is about all you want to do off the tee, so if this is a two iron for me, but I did yank it down left and into the desert scape. Not much rough on this golf course. There's just going to be a lot of fairway, a lot of bunkers, and a lot of this desert along the side. Wait, spun off in the bunker? Oh no. Really thought I hit enough out of that fairway waste area to get it up onto the green, but not quite enough, left it short in this big, big bunker that's protecting the front of the green. Splashed it out to about 25 feet, and I uh, was just trying to feel the speed of the greens here on the first hole, and, well, did that one pretty good. Lagged it on down there to an easy tap-in, and it's a stress-free bogey on the first hole. I mean, hey, we'll take what we can get, because this is my favorite kind of hole we can possibly see. Sitting at 592 yards from the Silver Tees, it does make it somewhat reachable for me depending on the conditions. Now off the tee, all you have to worry about is the bunker down the left. I absolutely love the aesthetic here on the golf course, how they burn out the grass around the bunkers. It really makes them pop out off that beautiful emerald green grass. Man, it tells you right where you don't want to go. Well, heading into the green here, there's nothing but trouble all around there. The green's wrapped around the lake there on the right-hand side, but there is plenty of room to bail out left if that's the way you need to go. Now, you see the trees behind me. They are blowing. This is playing straight downwind. Played that ball a little bit farther off my front foot. Definitely want to get it elevated up in the wind. That ball bounced over that fairway bunker. Now leaving myself 229 yards to the flag. Adjusted, it adjusted down to 215. I took my 185 club because there was plenty of breeze behind me. Smashed that seven iron right to the middle of the green and faced a very makeable eagle putt here. But, you know, ultimately a tap-in stress-free birdie putt is going to rectify that bogey on the first hole, and we're going to face a beautiful par 3 here. Number 3 is protected all by another faced deep bunker. This Arnold Palmer classic design is an absolute beauty. With this pin playing in the front, I wanted to take that 7-iron that I just pured on number 2 and hit it its stock distance about 185 to 190 yards, and I hit it right to the middle of the green. My buddy was here next to me, I believe he was putting for a 4, and wouldn't you know if the guy absolutely drained it from 35 feet. Well, it was my turn. Come on. Uh-oh, hold on, hold on. So one ended up right next to the camera, but to me, that's relatively a tap-in. Right in the middle of the cup, no worries. Salvage the par, and we're on to the fourth. This is one of the most beautiful holes on the entire golf course. A dogleg around all of that waste area bunker down the left-hand side, and it plays right up into the mountainside. 
A layup shot down the right-hand side about 250 yards should be ideal, leaving myself a wedge into the hole. Back right hole location this time, and it's protected once again by some deep, deep bunkers. Like I said, 250 yards should be ideal, so another two iron off the tee for me, this time rectifying the shot from the first and placing it right down the middle. Now that's a big pitching wedge for me. Normally goes about 140, but it was back into that breeze. This is the second time in a row that my ball has just plugged. Oh, I shouldn't have taken that walk. That's the early walk that kills you. <gasps> Sometimes it is the early walk that kills you, but at the same time, you didn't hit the putt that goes in the hole. Hole number five here, 333 from the tips. A little baby cove of a par four wrapping around those absolutely gigantic trees. That's also a big slope you see in front of the hole, and that's really all you gotta deal with here. So, not much trouble for me, just gotta shape it properly and hit it hard. Oh, that's right at it. Wow, that's right at it, that's really good. Oh boy. I really hope the next scene is as good as it looks. Not quite as good as I thought it would be, but hey, it's right in the face, right in front of the hole. Pretty bad chip shot out of me here, though. Leaves a big, long birdie putt down the hill, and you know what? This is one of those ones you just want to cozy on down there, so you don't have to worry about the next one. Mission accomplished. Unfortunately, it's a par, but it is what it is, right? This is golf. We're on to the hardest hole on the front nine because it, look at this tee shot. Nearly 500 yards in a par four and there's just absolutely nowhere to go. My driver will reach that bunker, which means you gotta squeeze it into a 10 yard gap between the bunker and the water if you're gonna hit driver. For some reason, I didn't think about that because my brain was elsewhere at the moment. My rangefinder, magnetic thing on the side of it, yeah, it dropped off the cart, hit the ground, and well, it's currently in for repairs. But at the moment, I was a little hot. When I try to get a little bit more out of it, I tend to yank it left. That's what happened. Look at the side hill slope. Now it's pretty cool here how all the rough is burned out, so if you do find it, it is relatively fluffy stuff, which caused a big flyer lie for me, sending my ball over the front flag and into this back bunker. I was able to hit a halfway decent bunker shot though, and left myself a look at the par, but off the back lip, you just can't do it when you hit it that hard. Tap one in for the bogey, and let's just go on to the next one. That honestly was my medicine I needed to take. I was a little heated at the time, and finally I saw another par five in front of me, so I told myself just go out and get that birdie that you know you can get. Avoiding the right-hand side shouldn't be much of a problem as the driver is turning over left, and that bunker there is 320 yards, I believe, to reach from the silver tees, shouldn't put it into play for me. A nice pure one down the middle. But sitting at 603, it's gonna take two perfect shots out of me. Look at the way that this center lake divides this hole. You're gonna have to hit a great layup shot or a absolutely perfect second shot to get one through that little bottleneck green. This pin today is sitting up on the back right shelf. It is elevated from the front and the front left, which are both lower. 
just like the last one. I was definitely going to avoid the water down the right, and I tugged it just a bit, and it sat right down next to the cart path here. Took a drop on next to it, and, well, I was well over 300 yards into the green, so there was no way I was going to go for it. But I needed to hit it a decent way down there. I wanted a wedge in my hand. Well, mission was accomplished with the four iron there. I got a wedge in my hand. Beautiful 135 number. Let's stick it close. It hit right between the hole and the slope and kicked down to the left, leaving myself a long birdie putt up the slope onto the other tier. Couldn't quite judge the, the distance well and left myself a tricky one here for par. There we go. That's what you want to see. That's just a working man's par. Keep the ball in front of you and put it in the hole. Now here, a beautiful par three, number eight, with the restaurant there on the right-hand side and that little natural rock outcropping. Look at the hole as well. Another one tucked right over the bunker. Not much room to go for it unless you're going to go right at the hole. Air off to the right-hand side for sure, but there's not much room up against that rock face. Make sure you judge your club properly on this hole. When my clubs are really working for me, my irons have that little baby turnover draw. Man, that was beautiful. Left myself underneath the hole. Come on, let's get it to roll in. Wow, it trickles towards the rocks. Yeah, I guess it's off the bunker, but still. That's okay. It's okay. We got one more to go. One more chance for another birdie, and we're facing another very difficult par four. The way that this waste bunker comes into play down the middle, absolutely, I, just, I thought this was awesome because off the tee, I thought I could actually reach that left-hand fairway, which all of a sudden brought the entire bunker into play. Ultimately, I decided to go down the right-hand fairway with my typical draw, and we'll see how we do here, but I got to get a lot out of this because there's going to be a decent amount of distance left into this hole. Luckily, it is a front hole location, but man, look at all those bunkers protecting that green. First things first, let's put one down the fairway. The right-hand side of the fairway is the one I'm choosing. Right down Broadway. Second hole in a row that I had a seven iron in my hand. I just flagged the one before it, and this was a carbon copy. That, ladies and gentlemen, was a golf shot. Hey, don't forget to please smash that like button down below. Subscribe as well. I'd love to have you back here. Let's go make this tap in, get it all finished up. A tap in birdie to take it into the back nine with an even par score. Whew, that was a great, great little tap-in birdie, huh? Finally was able to make one here. On to another nine holes. Don't forget to smash that like button down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time for the back nine here at Silver Rock. Later.